Hello guys, I'm gonna show you in this video here a partially reverse engineered schematic of this inverter board. I was actually trying to repair the microwave oven, but I blew up the inverter board before I could finish the repair. But anyway, I, I managed to draw part of the schematic and I'm gonna describe here how it works. So this is the microwave oven, we, st we try to start it up and it tries to turn on, but then it shows the H97 fault. Now this one here is the model number, the ST661B. If that H97 fault was triggered a few times, the relay on the control board will turn on, so it will supply power to the inverter board, but there will, no, there will be no command to actually turn on the inverter. So this one has to be reset first according to the description you see here. When I started the repair I checked the magnetron first of course. The filament terminals should show a very low resistance value and from the filament to the chassis it should be high resistance. So these initial measurements were okay so supposing the magnetron was correct. And we see here on the AC input connector that really when we try to turn on the uh, the microwave oven that there is uh, AC voltage going to the inverter board. Now this is the inverter board once opened. Uh, these three wires here, there's one ground wire, one uh, signal wire from the main board and one feedback uh, error signal. They go through these two uh, optocouplers. Then here on the heatsink we have one uh, full bridge rectifier and this big resistor here is just uh, in series with the DC voltage and then goes to some Zena diodes. The main transformer, the output high voltage diodes and capacitors and these components here including the IGBT are the primary power switching circuit which you soon will be seeing on the schematic. Uh, if you decide to take measurements on this on this inverter board while it's uh, disassembled, make sure that these two parts that are circled here that they are actually connected. So the that part of the inverter board needs to be connected to the chassis because that's the return path for the magnetron. Okay, I found this interesting uh, drawing here on the internet. It shows some details of the transformer. The primary windings, secondary windings, then CN703, that's the output for the filament, the high voltage diodes, and also to the left here, don't adjust the little trim pot. And then there is CN701, that's the connector for the control signal and feedback signal. Here on the oscillograph, we can see what happens when we start up the board. The yellow one is the driving signal, that's 220 Hz, that's coming from the control board. The red one is the magnetron current from, from the filament. And then the green one is the feedback signal that goes back to the control board. Uh, here we see a zoom, yeah that's the signal, the yellow one signal from the, from the main board. The red one the current and the green one the feedback signal. So this is it, uh, the schematic for this particular board. We see the AC voltage coming in here to uh, on CN702. It goes right to the, the main rectifier and is then being used here for the switching, for the power switching. But let's first see what else is happening here. They have a shunt resistor here, uh, which I think was just uh, some wire. And uh, what we can do with it is measure the current that's for these here, for these guys. Uh, this this signal goes then into this s uh, secret chip. Thank you Panasonic for not saying anything or revealing anything about this chip. But anyway, that's our controller chip here. Um, so the AC voltage also is being uh, rectified here and this is the big white resistor we saw on the we saw previously. Um, 
we generate about 20 volts that's with these two uh, xenodiodes and then after that we have 12 volt about here VCC these two, uh, no actually uh, this one, these two here are so these two here are regulated voltages they're not gonna fluctuate depending on the AC input voltage they put a big resistor in here, the white one, because it obviously it's gonna dissipate a lot of heat uh, then we have several branches here with uh, resistors in series they all lower the initial DC voltage here if we have 120 we have about 160 volts here peak and this is all, this, these are only resistive dividers I don't know why there would be so many who are all doing almost the same thing but the voltage here is gonna be similar to this one just smaller and all of these go somehow into this chip one goes through here the other one through here uh, this one obviously is uh, s slow reacting because there's a big capacitor here 10 microfarads so I don't know exact exactly what they are doing but they are being used to measure the AC input voltage or maybe even to measure the phase and the yeah the phase of, of the input voltage so you know when there's a peak or when it's at his, its lowest value the input sine wave so that's one thing then the main switching circuit is here that's the, the main transformer, the big transformer here where we have um, the filament uh, winding and the high voltage windings this is then rectified and uh, doubled here with these diodes when I'm, if I'm not mistaken and then according to some uh, data sheet I found it should be about 4500 volts uh, here from here to the chassis and if I'm not mistaken I measured up to 6000 volts on mine with a high voltage probe not sure if that's normal or not probably not because this thing wasn't working uh, I checked all these capacitors, the diodes and they were all okay all these capacitors too uh, this looks like a resonant power, uh, resonant, um, well, power, power supply with an IGBT here, that's the big, uh, big uh, part on the heatsink, the free pin, free terminal part, and it's being driven through this buffer here. Yeah, that's the DC voltage from here, 20 volts, and the logic signal comes from here, pin 17 of this chip. So that's something we can measure with an oscilloscope. Um, the frequency will change. It's at several tens of kilohertz. All of these small uh, resistors and capacitors, uh, of course, I have no idea what they're good for because this chip here is a big, uh, I don't know. And we also have from the shunt resistor here one signal going in here so this may be to detect overcurrent or even the phase of the current so it could adjust its output signal according to the current it, uh, that's going through here uh, but this is all stuff um, we don't know unless I find a data sheet for this chip and the most interesting part is actually here uh, or one of the more interesting parts I think because I didn't uh, bec because before starting all this I didn't even know where uh, what to measure around here so this is the input signal is 220 uh, Hertz when it works when it's so that's the on signal and the output here is supposed to be a low signal when this thing uh, when everything is okay 
here on on this pin uh, low from from here to primary ground yeah with, which is this one pin 2 primary ground and yeah that's about it on this board if somebody has more information about this chip would be awesome I don't I didn't find anything because we of course are not supposed to be repairing any stuff and just throw it away right okay guys thanks for watching and um, have a nice day